hypertrichosis, commonly known as werewolf syndrome. It's a rare condition characterized by excessive hair growth anywhere on the body. It can affect both males and females, but it's incredibly uncommon. One of the most famous people born in the United States with hypertrichosis is Alice Doherty, also known as the Minnesota Woolly Girl. Alice was born in March 1887 to ordinary parents with two other siblings who did not have hypertrichosis. Despite her hairy exterior traits, her parents adored her, and they quickly realized that people would gladly pay to see her. This seemed to be common at the time. They began exhibiting her in their local community when she was just two years old. People who came to see Alice remarked on her spirit as well as her unusual appearance, describing her as a frolicsome as a kitten young child. Her woolly mane grew with her, and by the time she was five years old, her facial hair, which completely covered her face, was more than 13 centimeters or five inches long. It had grown to a whopping 23 centimeters, nine inches by her adolescence. As Alice's fame grew alongside her hair, her parents decided it was time for her to make more money. They placed her in a unique setting, a storefront. The front of a store would be rented out as a performance space with a mission charged to see Alice. She was set up in storefronts across the country with Professor Weller's one-man band, gaining both fame and money at the time. Although Alice was making a good living, she wasn't doing as well as her other extremely hairy people at the time, such as Jojo the Dog-Faced Boy. This was due to the fact that she lacked major backing from the entertainment industry. As Alice grew older, she realized she wasn't a natural entertainer. She retired in Dallas in 1915, having spent a large sum of money from her youth as a curiosity for the masses. She lived there for the rest of her days until she passed away peacefully in June 1933 at the age of 46. For many years, Alice's golden facial locks delighted people, and she is still remembered as America's hairy beauty. Hypertrichosis has no known cause, and congenital hypertrichosis is thought to be a genetic disorder inherited or caused by spontaneous mutation. Acquired hypertrichosis can occur in people who have been diagnosed with cancer at a later stage. There have been less than 50 documented cases worldwide, and there's no potentially fatal complications. However, the day-to-day -day management of the condition and efforts to remove the excess hair can be very challenging. There is no cure for hypertrichosis, and there is no way to prevent the congenital form of the disease. People born with this, especially severe forms, have no one-time treatment. Some people with the condition choose to remove excess hair regularly by shaving or waxing, while others use permanent methods such as electrolysis. Patients suffering from hypertrichosis may experience severe emotional distress, though, particularly if they don't have access to permanent laser hair removal or electrolysis. Self-esteem and quality of life may be extremely low in these patients as a result of societal scrutiny and bullying in patients of all ages. Times have changed quite a bit since the 1880s. Parenting has changed quite a bit as well. But history is there for us to learn from and grow from, to be better as we move forward. These are Interesting Things with J.C.